What's up, guys? It's Brian again from Lake Hickory Scuba Marine. I got one of my dive masters. Y'all, you guys know him as Instructor T. Roy. He did our fin video for us. Uh, Troy just bought him some uh, aluminum eighties from an, another diver of ours, and we're actually going to break these guys down because he just got a manifold and a band system, and we're actually going to put these together as a uh, double back mount system, if you will. And I'm going to kind of walk you through the process of how we do that. I know a lot of questions, a lot of you guys have been asking some more technical related questions on our channel and been wanting to see some more technical videos. Um, so that's kind of what we're going to do. I'm going to show you how you can take a uh, two single 80s and build them into a double system. Of course, you got to have both cylinders. You need a left and right hand valve. Of course, we've got the manifold here to go between them. You need the hardware and the bands to do it as well. So the first thing that I'm going to do is actually strip these cylinders all the way down. I'm going to take, this one's actually got a stage kit. I'm going to take it off because the previous owner of these tanks will actually wants it back. And then, of course, I'm going to take the valves out. I'm going to do a quick visual inspection, and then I'll walk you through the process of how you put a set of doubles together. So let me get these stripped down real quick, and then I'll get right back with you. All right, so guys, I'm going to go ahead and strip this one down. Troy's behind me with the other cylinder. He's going to go ahead and break it down. He's one of our visual inspectors here, so I'm going to actually let him do the visual inspection. But these stage kits are pretty simple in design. It's just a metal band that kind of holds a webbing strap on. So I'm just going to loosen it up until I can disconnect the webbing itself and then I'll be able to take the stage kit right off of it. Should have enough play here. I'm just simply take the bolt snap, pull it up through. And this one was actually wrapped a couple times to make sure it was sized right for the customer or for the diver. I'm going to take the band off and I'm going to take the top of the stage off as well. And just like that, stage kit is off. Now we can get the valve off. We're also going to take these tank boots off so that we can make sure that both tanks are pretty even as we put the bands on. All right, the next step, of course, is getting these valves off. And I've showed you in the past of how we take valves off. We never want to hit the actual uh, turn knob on here. We want to be very careful. Of course, you want to drain it, make sure there's no air left in it, and we want to look for a flat spot. This valve has two flat spots here, and of course, if you have a rounded neck on your valve itself, you can actually use the flat spots up top as well. But I'm just going to take my adjustable wrench, and I'm going to fit it to that flat spot, and I'm just going to simply pop on it until it breaks free. Once it breaks free, then I can very easily just screw the valve off without any damage. Now at this point, I will hand it over to Troy and I'm going to actually let him do a visual inspection of this cylinder as well. Okay. Everything looks good on the inside on that one? Look great. Awesome. Check the threads out real quick. Guys, basically what he's doing, we're looking in the threads, making sure there's no cracks. He did an internal inspection, just making sure that there's no moisture build up. A lot of times when you drain a tank, there's a lot of condensation and moisture will build up from it. But we're just going to do a quick visual inspection. And I've recently visually inspected these in the past months. We know they're good, but anytime you take a valve off, you just want to do a quick visual inspection of your cylinder. Good? Everything's good. All right, guys, so the next thing we're going to do is pop off these tank boots. And in theory, tank boots are supposed to protect the bottom of the tank. We actually take it off all our aluminum cylinders. Um, you know, on a steel cylinder, you still want a tank boot because it allows that tank to be stood up. But on an aluminum cylinder, they're really not that good for anything other than just keeping the paint from being scratched. But the reason I'm taking this off is when we use this table to slide the two tanks together, I want to make sure that they're at the exact same height when I put the bands on them. And unfortunately, tank boots come in different thicknesses, so unless they're identical, you're not going to have those tanks evened out. And I want to make sure both tanks are even, so to do that, I'm going to take both of these tank boots out. All I'm doing is simply just hitting it with a rubber mallet. I'll spin it just a little bit and continue to hit it until it pops off. Just like that, 
Now I'm going to knock the other one off real quick and then we'll start with the bands and all the uh, hardware from that point on. All right, guys, so the next step, of course, I want to clean off my table. I don't want any raised edges. I want a nice, smooth, flat surface. And the really cool thing about our table, I like this backdrop here because it's going to be flat and even across the board. So I can actually load, put both cylinders up there to make them nice and even. Now, there's also another final step that I need to do is where the manifold is going to come in, there's these little plugs. And I actually want to take these plugs out, and that way I can actually fit the manifold up in them. If you've ever seen a set of doubles that's been broke down for side mount cylinders, you're going to have to put these little plugs in it, and that just kind of mimics that manifold as far as sealing off that. So we're going to take both of these out. We're going to get it up here on the table, and then we'll slide both cylinders all the way back. That way we know that they're on a flat level surface, and of course we're going to have them both even. Now ideally you want some type of system that you can lay the tanks in, but if you don't have that system, I'm going to show you how you can do it on a table just like ours here as well. All right, guys, so the next step is I've got to install the manifold, and I've actually already got it started a couple threads here. Um, it's very important that we also grease the O-rings here, or lube the O-rings, if you will, and I just use a standard crystal lube for that. I'm not actually lubing up the threads. I'm just lubing the O-rings that's on the threads. And when you install a manifold, you want a lot of play in it. As you can tell, it's very smooth. As I screw this guy in, I don't want any catches in it. If you got a catch, it usually means you've cross-threaded it or your tanks are not evenly dispersed across. So as you're doing it, as you're screwing it on, if you feel a little bit of resistance, all you've got to do is either separate the tanks or pull them in a little bit until that resistance goes away. Then you can continue to screw your manifold on between the two valves. And it doesn't take much. You just want to work them tanks kind of back and forth to you no longer feel resistance and you can actually screw the manifold all the way down. It's very important that we keep the gap between the edges of the manifold and the valves equal on both sides. And like I said, just to do that, you just got to simply either separate the tanks, spread them out, or pull them together as you're doing it. And very easily you can keep that manifold from cross-threading. All right, guys, so now that we got the manifold installed, the next thing I want to do is actually make sure that this is loose. I don't want it super tight because I need to be able to adjust it for the diver. So as he reaches back to do a valve drill, he needs to be able to reach this. So typically what I'll do is bring it straight up and down with the top of the valve, and then I'm going to give it just a slight extra turn towards the back of his head, just enough so that as he reaches back with either hand, he can actually reach the shutoff for the manifold. So now that we've got this installed, I'm going to take these little nuts here on the side of the manifold and I'm going to actually screw them down to lock it in place. And I want to make sure that I have the same amount of gap on both sides. Now, if you're not sure if you've got it screwed in all the way, you can finally give it one final turn just to make sure. And if the manifold does not come back up to at least that 90 degree angle or perpendicular, if you will, to the table, then you've went too far and you're going to have to actually undo it one turn and then use the nuts to screw in. It looks like I had at least one more turn just to show you what that would look like. If I tighten it one more time, as you can see the cutoff or the uh, manifold here is actually going to be going straight down and we don't want that. And I can't go any further with it, so I'm actually going to loosen it up just about maybe a half a turn. And like I said, I usually start perfectly perpendicular to the table, if you will, or uh, parallel to the table, and then I'm gonna turn it slightly back towards the diver's head, uh, maybe at a 45, if you will, and that way he should be able to reach this knob if he ever needed to do a valve drill. Now at this point, I can simply tighten down on these nuts, and they shouldn't be very hard to do. You should be able to do them with your hands. Once you've got them down, then you'll simply just take your wrench, and give it a little snug, twist okay and then once that's done your manifold is properly installed and what that also does it locks it into place but it also gives you a little play so that he can manipulate it as well so now that we got the manifold manifold installed now we're going to go and put on the tank bands all right, guys, so I've actually flipped the tanks over so you can get a little bit better view here. 
Um, these bands have actually been on these tanks prior. The same gentleman that Troy bought these from actually had them doubled up. I broke them apart for him for stage cylinders, and now we're going to put them back together. So these are the original bands that came on them. And I've actually got them marked both top and bottom. Now, mostly the bands are always going to be the same, so it doesn't really matter which one goes on top, which one goes on bottom. However, they have kind of formed to these cylinders because they've been on for a while. Um, and so I'm going to put them back in the order that they were. Now, to get started, I'm actually going to take my hardware here, and I'm going to go ahead and thread some of it on because it's a little bit easier to do it now during this process than waiting once I've got everything up in there. So all I'm going to do is shove the bolt up through the bottom of the band. I'm going to have a washer and a lock washer. And then I'm going to place my nut on top, but I'm not going to tighten it all the way down. I'm just going to simply start the nut onto the bolt just until I can see the threads and I'm going to stop from there because I still need a lot of play for that band to be able to open up. Now at this point, you want to be very careful. And that, once again, even if you had a jig to do this with, you're still going to have to be lifting up on these cylinders. So you want to be careful that you're not putting too much tension up here on the manifold itself. So what I'm going to do is actually lift up the tanks and I'm going to let Troy slide the bands up as far as he can get it. And typically speaking, we want these bands about to the top of the crown here or to the crest of, of the cylinder. So he's just going to slide them up. We're just going to temporarily put them in place and then we can measure them out to meet the specs of his back plate. So you ready, Troy? Yep. All right, I'm going to lift up, simply slide them up as far as you can get them. Okay, and we'll lift up on the front. Okay, it's good for right now. And we're going to do the exact same thing with the second set of bands. We're going to prepare our bolt. Okay, just getting it started. We're going to place it up on the cylinder. I'm going to lift up on the cylinder and he's going to slide it up. Now I'm not too worried about tightening these down yet because we need to make sure that we measured out for his back plate. So I'm going to pull out a tape measure. We're going to pull out his back plate. We're going to measure the whole distance and that's what we want this to equal. The same amount of distance between the holes on his back plate, the same amount of distance needs to match the bolts on the uh, band system itself. All right, guys, so our next step before we go any further, we need to measure the holes in his back plate. And most back plates, most manufacturers are going to be pretty equal as far as where the holes. It's a pretty standard uh, length. What I'm actually going to do is measure from the center of this hole here to the top of this slot here. And that's going to be the two holes that he uses. If he decides that he doesn't want it in the top slot, he wants to use the next one down, then we will measure the difference here and we'll find it here in the center. And it should still come up to the same amount of distance. So if I find the center of that top hole and the center or the top of this slot here, it comes down to 11 inches. And that's what we need to space these bolts out at 11 inches to make sure it's going to line up not only with his back plate, but also with his wing as well. All right, guys, so the placement of these bands are really going to be determined on what cylinder you've got and how high you want the tanks to rise. Typically speaking, what I do is I take this top band and I find the top of the crest of the cylinder here, and that's usually where I put it. Now, unfortunately, these are two different aluminum 80s. They're not made um, by the same manufacturer, and they're also not made at the same time. They were not even made in the same factory. So we're going to have to compensate a little bit for that. We've already measured out the distance, which is about 11 inches of what we needed. And since these tanks were together previously, there was actually a mark on the cylinders that we marked originally. So instead of lining up the top band, we actually went ahead and lined up the bottom band to put it back exactly where it was at. And so now we can measure up the 11 inches to the top. Now, usually when I do that, I'm not gonna use this top part of the tape measure because it moves. I'm actually gonna jump up to the two inch mark and I'm gonna use it as my starting point. And then all I have to do is measure up 11 inches from that starting point and of course, that's going to be 13 inches as far as the tape measure is concerned. We know that to be really 11 inches. So I placed a 2-inch mark at the center of that bolt. I'm going to move this band up until it says 13 inches in the center. And then I can simply tighten it down. Now to do that, I'm going to use two different wrenches to do it. I'm going to use the closed end of the wrench to hold the bottom nut. And I'm going to use the open end of the wrench to uh, maneuver the top part of the nut. And I'm going to simply just tighten it down until it's snug. It doesn't have to be super duper He-Man tied. It just needs to be snug. Once I've got it, and as you're doing this, you want to kind of work back and forth, back and forth to make sure that these bands don't move out of place. So go a few threads here, a few threads there, a few threads here, and a few threads there. Just back and forth until you have it good and snug, and then your band should be adequately 
uh, secured to the cylinders. As you're doing this, you want to double check just to make sure that you still have the same amount of distance and a gap up here at your manifold between the tank valves, and that way you're, you're making sure you're not putting any undue stress on it as well. Okay, so we're going to flip this over and we're going to make sure the back side's secured as well. All right, guys, so the next step, I want to make sure, even though I know that these are 11 inches on center, I want to make sure that they're going to line up with his back plate. So since I measured from this top hole and we use the top of the slot, all I'm going to do is just kind of hang it there on the top hole there, and I'm going to make sure that bottom bolt lines up at the top of that slot. And as you can see, it's perfectly centered here and it is sitting on or resting on the top of the slot there. He can very easily shift it up if he needs to based off his body's profile or whatnot and it'll still line up as well. But now that we've got this lined up, our last step of course is to pressurize the cylinders. I'm gonna put about 50 to 100 PSI in this cylinder and just make sure that there's no leaks in the manifold. Once we've verified that, then of course I will go ahead and pressure these up to full working pressure. And then Troy's gonna actually re-thread on his back plate. We'll throw a wing on here and he should be good to go. All right, guys, so now that we got the cylinders banded together, everything's good to go. We're actually going to put about 50 to 100 PSI in here. We're going to do a quick bubble check. I'm just going to spray a little baby shampoo water on here just to make sure that there's no leaks that we need to worry about before we completely pressurize the cylinder. And then, of course, I'll pressurize them both up to working pressure. And like in our previous video of where I showed you how to fill doubles, I always want to make sure one valve is open. One valve is closed, and I always want to make sure this manifold is open. That way, as I fill one cylinder, it'll actually cascade over and fill up the other cylinder, and they'll both be filled at the same rate. So I'm going to go ahead and put my fill whip on here, and then we will get started. All right, guys, so we got his tanks finished up. I've got them filled up to the working pressure, which on these two tanks is 3,000 PSI per cylinder. I've got the manifold checked. I made sure that there was no leaks there, so he's going to be good to go to actually dive with these. I want to make you a couple quick pointers real quick. Anytime that you build a system like this, the manifold does not need to be actually tight. You actually want it a little bit loose, so it still should turn even with those nuts screwed down. Uh, and the theory there is, let's say that you're in that cave or cavern system or any type of overhead environment, if you used to have happen to get too close to the canopy, if you will, or whatnot, and you hit this valve, you could run the risk of actually hitting that manifold and breaking the manifold. But if it's loose enough that it'll turn, whenever he does hit it by mistake, it'll actually just bend into it and won't actually break the manifold. So we want to make sure that this part is actually still loose as well. Moving on down, we want to make sure that these bolts are 11 inches on center or based off what back plate and wing system you use, simply measure out the holes where you're going to set it and then of course make sure that your bolts are lined up. You want to make sure that the bands are relatively even on the cylinders, which brings me to my next point. Unless you have two cylinders from the exact same lot, you're not going to be exact and I need to stress that. These two cylinders here are about 10 years difference in uh, manufacture dates, so the cylinders are not the same. The, the height of the tank necks are not the same. Even the little groove in the bottom of these cylinders are not the same. And you're going to have to make a decision, or do you want everything perfectly flat across the top, or do you want it perfectly flat across the bottom? Now, the best case scenario is, even if the tanks are not even, 
You want this as straight as possible so there's no undue stress on the manifold, but you also want these tanks to be as flat as possible so that you don't have them cocked one side or the next. So when he takes these cylinders off, maybe he puts it on a tank bench or something like that, it's not putting undue stress on this because one tank's actually taller than the X. So with that being said, anytime you band up two cylinders, make sure that they're at least from the same lot and preferably from the same manufacturer as well. And that way you're going to be even across the spectrum as well. But guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you got any questions about doubles or side mount cylinders or anything like that or how you break them apart, just let me know down in the comment section below and I'll try to make you a video on it as well and I'll at least answer your questions as quickly and as best I can. But guys, if you like this video, you want to see more videos like this, simply smash that like button and definitely share it as well. As always, make sure you follow us on Instagram and Twitter, like us on Facebook, pin us on Pinterest, subscribe to us here on YouTube, and as always, guys, we appreciate your business. Guys, we really appreciate you watching our videos. If you liked it, make sure to give us a big thumbs up. If you're not a subscriber, simply hit that subscriber button for us and make sure you hit the little bell to turn on all notifications. If you want to see some other cool videos, make sure to click these links here. They could be scuba tips, they could be diving videos, search and recovery videos, or gear reviews. Once again, guys, we really appreciate it.